Well, this matchup has taken on a very different feel. The Colts showing they can win with a head coach who'd never coached above the high school level. Blitz is on and throwing for Adams, broken up. There's no flag and on downs, the Colts hold. Philadelphia Eagles finally getting their first taste of Sarcasta ball. Instead, Heineke wisely and now a flag. Wow. And that's going to, in essence, end the game. So we're beyond two-hand touch now. Just have to tackle by what? Trying to use psychic power? Just checking is all. No, no, no. Heineke gave himself up. Brandon Graham took responsibility. Didn't blame the refs. Still, don't think it's wise for that ref to vacation in Philly anytime soon. Personal foul. Defense number 55. 15-yard penalty. First down. Now the Eagles have to try and do something they haven't done all year. Rebound after a loss. Pretty sure the focus this week, ball security. Aired out, downfield, and... You don't see many 8-0 teams turn the ball over four times in one game. They'd only given it away three times all year, and that's why we have ants. Jalen Hurts threw one INT. That's going to happen occasionally, but they can't lose three fumbles again this week if they expect to get back into the win call. This one a shot. Watkins a diving catch. Ball comes out. Commanders pick it up at the 15-yard line. Task number two, don't let Jonathan Taylor on the Colts' run game dictate the terms. Wondered what a guy with no experience as an NFL coach would do. Same thing as the rest of us would have done. Hey, let's run the ball with JT. How hard is this coaching thing, right? Taylor last week, 147 yards, 6.7 a carry, one touchdown. There's a big hole. He's off to the races. And you can kiss him goodbye. The Colts rushed for over 200 yards versus Vegas. Jalen Hurts has nothing on Matt Ryan's stems. The Iceman broke off a 39-yarder in Week 10. Ryan for 39 yards. Did the Raiders think the play was over? He needs the 28. He's got a first down. Look at the 37-year-old quarterback. Being that seems unlikely to happen again, let's focus on Philadelphia's skill versus standard backs. They faced 49 rush attempts versus Washington, held them to 3.1 yards per carry, held both primary backs under three and a half a run. That sounds pretty stout. Third down and one, Robinson bottled up. And back to the line of scrimmage, that's it. The however, that showing doesn't fit their 2022 body of work. They have given up a fat 4.6 yards per carry to running backs specifically this season. Big hole to the five, touch left for the pylon. Walk the dog. Plus, the strategy of three yards in a cloud of dust was meant to avoid throwing too often at Philadelphia's secondary while helping them set up short third downs, which it did. Philadelphia will be looking to correct that issue. They allowed Washington to convert 12 of 21 of those chances. Good protection pass is wide open to McLaurin. Philadelphia's secondary will obviously get tested some. They've been lights out, but Darius Slay will be looking to reassert himself as the top cornerback in the league because he wasn't last week. He did not slay all day. He gave up 104 yards on six catches. Just a foot race off the line of scrimmage, and, and McLaurin gets in behind him. This ball is as good as it can possibly be. Horseshoe fans might be thinking if the Heineken and Terry McLaurin can do that to him, surely Ryan and Michael Pittman or Paris Campbell can do a little something. Ryan made a triumphant return, 222 yards isn't much, but almost eight yards per attempt, no picks, a rating of 109.5. Ryan, down the middle he goes. Here goes Campbell, off to the races, touchdown! His primary targets, Pittman and Campbell, nine targets each last week, seven catches each. Smith the block at the right, tackle and downfield, they go, this is Campbell. The block here on a second down and five, and they find the receiver, Michael Pittman. Can't ignore tight end Kylan Granson either. Four targets, four catches, 57 yards. And he's got his receiver. That's caught by the tight end, Granson. Back to the Eagles offense now. How easy will it be for them to get back on track versus Indy's D? Hurts won't have Dallas Goddard for a while, hurt shoulder. So it puts pressure on A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith to carry things. Brown comes in off his worst showing. He had just one catch on four targets, just seven yards. Yeah, good play, and he's playing soft, and he just drives on it. You know, he beats A.J. Brown to the ball. Smith, on the other hand, scored. Pass is caught, Smith, touchdown. 
touchdown, Philadelphia. But just 39 yards, that's four straight games now he's ended with less than 45. And he was one of the fumblers, and so was Quez Watkins. But he did have 80 yards, so he should also factor plenty with Goddard's absence. Blitz. Wide open pass caught by Watkins. Colts aren't tough to pass on overall, rating allowed mid-90s, allowing close to 70% of passes to be completed. Chased on the play by Pay to the end zone. Caught for the touchdown. Morrow. They're not terrible by any means, though. Only seven yards per attempt allowed. Stephon Gilmore likely shadows Brown quite a bit. He has come up huge for them over and over this year has held QBs to an 80.2 rating, too. I know he's going to Devonta Adams one-on-one. -on -one. Gilmore's in position. Eagles run game. Both Hurts and Miles Sanders picked up 4.5 or better versus Washington. Hurts keeps right up the gut. Sanders only got 12 carries, though. Philadelphia running the ball just 20 times overall. How often will they try the ground game versus Indianapolis? They're holding runners to 3.8 yards per carry, second lowest in the league. Zamir White is in, gets the call on first and 10. Thrilled as he at the line of scrimmage. So what does that all mean to you? The coaching world loses its mind if Saturday beats Philadelphia, right? Lay out your thoughts in the comments section. We'll lay out some scores on the screen.